hello and welcome to episode 4 of One Credit Classics. 1986's Black Belt, which came out on the Sega Master System in around about November time, and it's interesting because it's a localization of a, a Fist of the North Star licensed uh, tie-in called uh, Hokuto no Ken. It was designed by a guy called Yuji Nakara, who'd later go on to work on Sonic the Hedgehog. Um, the Master System version in Japan and um, North America, I believe, actually, um, featured very different kind of artwork. The Japanese one specifically, like I say, had the characters from the manga cartoon, had Ken and uh, and Shin and, and uh, a lot of the guys on there and as you can see here I mean this is incredibly Fist of the North Star this kind of a uh, hundred crack fist type uh, type thing it's just missing kind of bodies exploding and uh, people being told that they're already dead um, but yeah we're going to be looking at a one credit clear on uh, black belts like I say um, a great scrolling beam up from that era but before we do we're going to have a little bit of a throwback so yesterday I did the one credit clear on Mickey Mouse cast of illusion, but there were a few issues with the uh, sound unfortunately from a commentary point of view Simply because the emulator that I'm using which is called uh, Fusion Doesn't have an inbuilt volume limiter like the main one does so I converted the file got all the way to the end It's like a 27 gig file it took about two hours to convert and then uh, I realized that you couldn't hear any of it And uh, I was really happy with the clear so um I thought I'd put it off, but I thought I'd like use this opportunity to kind of go over a few things that you probably couldn't hear in that uh, in in that clear. Maybe there's more like this stuff on the intro. Really, Mickey Mouse Cast of Illusion was uh, originally developed in around about 1989. It came out in 1990. It came out in a lot of formats uh, for Sega, so Master System, Game Gear, and Mega Drive. Practically a launch title from the Mega Drive. It had a couple of sequels specifically on the 8-bit console, so it had Land of Illusion that came out on the Master System and the Game Gear, and then a version called Legend of Illusion that didn't come out uh, in most locations on the Master System, came out on the Game Gear and came out on Brazil in the Master System, because uh, obviously it had a really good, uh, really good run there. The game itself um, comprises of six levels, and you can do the first five uh, in kind of any order, really. Uh, a block of three and a block of two. It makes sense to do Toyland out of the three first, which you'll see on the clear I did, to get the extra energy. And same with the clock tower next to get the energy through on that. So you end up with five bits of health and not uh, three. It was designed by a guy called Yoshio Yoshida, who went on to do Alex Kin Shinobi World, Asterix, Land of Illusion, uh, and Sonic on the Mass System as well. So uh, Disney tie-ins on the Sega consoles were everybody's played at least one of them and the platform games were usually incredibly incredibly solid the mass system came out in about August of 87 um, and it was Nintendo really had a foothold in the market in a lot of respects with the year with the Famicom if you look at total sold in the end uh, mass system sold 12 million Famicom sold 62 million so I mean a massive gap 50 million units but what you found by the time the 16-bit era came was the Genesis uh, or Mega Drive had shifted 40 million uh, and the SNES had done 49 million, so Sega really helped bridge that gap, and they bridged gap with bridge that gap, excuse me, with titles like this that got people really, uh, really interested and really involved. The kind of history for me with this, and like I kind of started talking about it a bit in the outro, but you couldn't hear it because it was a bit too, uh, the music was a bit too much. Was the fact that uh, I first played this when I was around about 11, um, and what had happened was um, my dad, who used to cycle to work, it was a half term, and uh, he cycled past a video rental shop. And uh, I came in from playing football one day, and he just came in from work, and he was like, oh, I hired you this game for the week, and it was Mickey Mouse and the Cast of Illusion. And so that was half term pretty much that time. I just spent the entire time in trying to beat it, and I just couldn't for the life of me, and he had to go give it back on the Friday. Um, and so on the Thursday night, he kind of basically said, because it was half term, I was only about 11, he said, just just keep playing it, you'll be all right. And um, he kind of walked in the spare room at about quarter midnight and I got to the last I got to the, the last the last boss miserable of which um, and he came and sat down next to me and I, and I beat it and he kind of pat me on the head a little bit and said like right I better, I better take this on so I don't forget it for work tomorrow and like I think the reason why I got all kind of a little choked up yesterday was like uh, it's probably the first time I've kind of played this game and got to the end and I heard that music and it kind of took me back a little bit and, and do you know what I mean I kind of Without getting stupid personal about it, kind of think about my dad every day, and, and it's just it, this is the point of it, do you know what I mean? This is the whole point of these games that they, they just take us back to these places without us even realizing it. But yeah, that was kind of it. All the rest of the stuff in there was probably quite glib at the time. I remarked that the music in the library sounds like Spats, the TV show, um, and I also made some remark to uh, 
popular UK mixed martial arts fighter Ian Hawkins because I killed everything by just brawling with it rather than attacking it scientifically. Um, he'll get that. He's a, he's a, they don't go on the monster for nothing. Um, but that was it really. I really I felt like it'd be nice to kind of. Uh, I mean, the clear's good, uh, like I say, but the music's like so super loud. <laughs> I just figured I'd try and get a bit of extra, extra kind of stuff in. Um, so enough of Mickey Mouse for a light one well, at lifetime. Probably till the next time I play like a, a, another Mickey Mouse game. So probably I'll probably end up doing Legend of Illusion and maybe Land of Illusion at some point. But um, what we're going to do now is uh, segue this somehow. I don't know how into uh, a one credit clear on Black Belt. Or as my good friend David Lethby would say, Black Belch. Let us get started with a one credit clear. Funny thing is, we haven't really got a choice but to do it one credit actually, because you don't get any continues on this. So, there's me, Ricky. Not kickboxing Ricky for uh, about four people. I love how I make these jokes, they're just so so incredibly niche. Um, as you can see, the, the fist of the nose, I should have got that really. That flying symbol, if you collect that, you're invincible for the next 10 hits, and it really helps because this game's full of uh, mini bosses uh, like this guy, Gordon Ramsay. Which just kicks in the head relentlessly, and as you can see, you get a bit of energy back for killing them. You also get uh, food, there you go. Sushi roll, although it looks a bit like a licorice all sort. Very fist of the nose, so the way everybody's, uh, everybody's blowing up. This first level is quite long, it does feature quite a lot of mini bosses. You can see why the invincibility thing is good as well, because when you kill a mini boss, you get energy back, so it's another way of getting a bit of energy. Here he is, Michael Jackson, with a, with a blonde wig. Michael Jackson was dead involved with Sega, incidentally. He'd written a load of songs for um, for uh, Sonic 2, I think. Um, and they were on about uh, translating them over, but they never got the uh, they never got the kind of go ahead for it. There's loads of shots of like uh, Michael Jackson recording studios with Sega, and obviously there was the Moonwalker game as well. Um, so I mean, there was that kind of relationship there. Who have we got now? The flying Postman. Amazing. Where's he off? Is that Frank Spence? Oh, I see. If you press down and up, you do like a big jump like that. But I'm kind of alright for the time being. Remember, there's a massive fat guy in a second to kind of kill, which is very like the Fist of the North Star games, really, because they did look oil. They did love a massive fat guy for you to waste. Here he is, JR booked him, Fry Ferguson. Nice. Job. Boss time. Now, I will try and beat these bosses as cleanly as possible and not kind of take advantage of any uh, obvious glitches. It doesn't look like I'm going to because I think he's going to. Is quite. He might, if he kicks, he might get me. Oh, I better actually try and beat this properly. Ooh. Problem with it. There we are. Oh, I think he's got me. No, he hasn't. You do more damage when he. Uh... There you go. That translates into iron fisted punishment, apparently. It's a bit much in it, really. I mean, he was done ages ago. Bully. Proper gem bully. Well, that's level one done. Right, you killed. And we will go on to level two. Which, from what I can remember, chapter two is the docks from Punch Out, and I get attacked by multiple versions of Hawk from the Legion of Doom. Some random reason. Now the ones with the enemies that jump, you can kind of well, just skip most of the level, but if you do kind of jumps as the enemy's just behind you, you'll kind of drill him into jumping as well, so it becomes, I hate this guy. If you don't get the range right, it's an absolute nightmare. And the controls aren't the best. <sighs> Ken Shiro would have killed him miles away. I told him he was already dead. There you go. Way too long for a mini boss. There we. What's this guy about? There you go. Eat that. Get invincibility for a bit, which will make the subsequent mini bosses easier. So yeah, I mean you can. I hope the Hulk just kicked me in the back there. Amazing. Uh, it couldn't do that to draws dog. I know his dad. I shouldn't speak killer. It's pro wrestling. You can't help yourself sometimes. They're just, they're just all dead. Right. Oh. Oh yeah, I'm still invincible. You see the music's changed, it means I can take 10 hits. So luckily enough, really, I'll go here, beat this guy with the chaps. 
<laughs> Amazing. Straight out of Judas Priest video. Okay. Another boss, I think. Yeah, it, I mean, it's hard to describe what this guy looks like. I'll try and beat this guy with kicks, if I remember rightly. Throw his boomerangs for some reason. Got me a bit there. I've got much long left. I've had kicked him about five times. There you go. Crushing the villain. This one's called. It just looks like booting someone, booting someone in the head and then booting him in the thigh a lot. Not really that technical, is it? He sold that well, though. Proto Ted DiBiase. Oh, and then he blew up. He doesn't get much better selling than that. It's not watching Ted DiBiase. He sell like a uh, seller shot to the midsection. So there's chapter two done. As you can see, like some of the bosses, quite the first couple are quite tricky. To be honest, they're they're easy to easy to die on. So level three, some kind of a bamboo hunting. Little guys with their red geese on, obviously signifies they're evil. Not too evil to get kicked in the head though. I think there's an invincibility thing. There it is. Because I'm pretty. I can't remember if it's this one or the next one. There's a mini boss. It's a guy with a whip. And obviously, you've seen how annoying that is. It's an even more annoying one. You can just completely just glitch you to death for a life. As I remember rightly, though, they don't, this level's very long. I like this kid. Captain Oak over here. Nice. Bit of health there. Straightforward, kicking fools all over the place. And as I say, yeah, I don't think this level's very long. This is the big sumo dude. Right, so what I need to do is lure him in. Big jump. Mess that up. Right. That's it. Now what should happen... Oh, God. I've messed this up terribly. That's it. He needs to get in this rhythm where he does that step and then palm strike thing. That's it. Dead. This one's called One Shot Fighting Spirit. It's quite clearly more than one. He's had enough there. Bully. <laughs> There's no need for any of these finishes. I get the fact they've stolen they've stolen your, your girlfriend. But uh, you'll get her back. It'll be alright. Now this. This is the level where you end up... You need the extra lives that you've got. Because the actual level itself uh, is very hard. It's dead easy to die here. Because all these sword sword guys take just got awkward attack patterns. Some of them just will run in straight away, attack, some of them will stop and attack. You've got that big port thing. Nice, that's gonna help me out quite a lot. And I remember the mini bosses on this being a nightmare as well. The guy with the whip's gonna come in now. There he is. Gotta try and just time it right. If he once get hit by him, he's gonna come rushing on now somewhere I'd imagine. Yeah. If you, if you, you can literally just glitch your entire energy by doing that. As you can see, the music's changed so I can be hit again now. It doesn't matter because he's dead. You can see how much, just for a standard uh, attack, I'll try and get that bit of food. That's going to help me out. Like I say, you can see how much, just as a standard attack, these do way more. See, you generally... Generally, don't get it too much by or do too much damage by those um, flying hawk things. So it's a lot of the time it's worth just um, getting it by them to be honest and just carrying on. This guy's are It's just about finding the right range. There we go. Oh god, I could have done with that. Keep walking. Ah. Nice. That's gonna help me out. Or is it? No, it's boss fight. Now. Apparently, according to all the guys that I've read, this guy's like, if you, if you find him legitimately, he's like the hardest guy. Um, because he's like uh, some form of ninja, apparently, and like uh, he dodges all your attacks. But um, there is quite a funny glitch, which you can see I'm doing now. Which <laughs> you can just devolve the whole thing into a, some kind of rock'em sock'em robot stand in the pocket and trade fest, which uh, you win quite easily. Um, Repentance is useless, that says, apparently. Once again, I got all these off the internet, so they could say absolutely anything. Um, 
Right, last level. Um, well, last one of these levels. And once again, we're able to take advantage of the kind of a, the jumping kick kind of thing. Um, so we can not skip the level, but you can kind of get through it quicker. Now, the bosses here are quite hard. What you really need to try and do is... There you go. That's a good example. Is isolate one of them and get rid of them. Because if you get if you ever get two of them at the same time, it's an absolute nightmare. There you go. Happy with that. That'll help me out for the next one. Because as I remember rightly, all the bosses are just um, uh, the flamethrower guys. As you see, the music's still the same. There you go. <laughs> Corner trap him. You wouldn't be happy though, would you? Do you know what I mean? Due to the black belt turns up, you shoot four times full on in the face with a flamethrower and he just laughs at you. Not ideal. Right. There you go. That's Grace Jones done with. And I think. Oh, see, ya. this thing is easy now. Nice. I'm happy with that. These things are usually um, a lot, a lot harder than that. Right now, this boss has got a, um, a sequence that you've got to. What's it? You've got to, you've got to hit it with a jump kick first. Then you've got to hit it with a punch to the body, then a low punch, and then a low kick, and that's the only way you can do damage. You'll do it again. So jump kick, punch, to the punch high, punch low, low kick, and then what happens is she does that. Oh, you got to try and. You're trying to hit her in midair, so you've got to wait for her to do that big jump and kick attack. And you've got to get on the underside. There you go. And just repeatedly pommel her in the ovaries until uh, until she stops moving. I mean, that's harsh, if if anything. And I mean that that <laughs> that move's called burst into vital parts. <laughs> brutal, absolutely brutal. And then now you go on to the last boss, the guy who has uh, stolen your lovely girlfriend so once again like I say um, I'll see if I can get this to work so that's Wang who knows all the moves that you know <laughs> and what I'll do is I will glitch him to death until I can no longer glitch him and then I'll just try and hit him once and then that will be that and he will turn into a Michael Jackson thriller zombie and then he will turn into Judd Nelson at the end of the breakfast club I mean, it's uh, it's all the 80s references you could ever want in one easy location. Not only a one credit clear, uh, a one life clear, no less, as he turns into Moonwalker and then flies off to that pagoda. And there we go. Rescue my lovely girlfriend. That's not the best animation, is it? But <laughs> Bless. You finally defeated the boss and temporarily bought peace of the world. Well, I've killed everybody, so now with the experience you've gained and Kyoko's love to sustain you, see, that's all you needed. Continue to battle onward to an even more rousing victory. There's nobody left. I've killed everybody. Flat out killed everybody. What a lot of fun that was. Um, a, a really early title in the Master Systems canon, but it goes to show when you play these games that uh, they're just so much fun. It's fun playing them and it's fun kind of finding out about them. I played this once or twice when I was a kid I had a friend who had it and I lent it and I could never get past the sumo wrestler guy um, but yeah it's, it's a lot of fun to, to kind of play it through once again thanks to everybody who's been getting involved with the channel it's been uh, it's been really really good these last couple of days um, my plan when I get to 100 subscribers is to change the channel name and then do a competition so if you subscribe um, and you're one of the hundred then you'll be in the kind of uh, you won't have to do anything either I'll just use a piece of software to pick a, a subscriber out and then um, what I'll do is I will um, get some stuff made with the, the logo that uh, that Jamie made for me the other day. If you look at the last, I'll put it in this one as well. Actually, there's a link in the um, in the description box um, to uh, to his website because he's really good uh, with the kind of design and photography and stuff. But what I'll do is he's designed me some uh, logos, so I'll go on Cafe Press and get some mugs made and stuff like that. And then I'll uh, like I say, I'll give a. Uh, I'll get them given away when we get to uh, when we get to 100. But once again, thank you very much for being a part of One Credit Classic. Hopefully, you could hear me this time, and uh, I will look forward to the next one. Take good care of yourself. <laughs>